Lawrence, ESP parapsychology, two kinds of issues. One, what is the data like? Controversial, very small effect at best. Is it real? Problem okay. one. I don't think anybody's going to solve that uh, to get everybody to agree on that. Yeah, problem well, two, I don't accept the, except right, let, it's not controversial. But I'm interested in, in, in problem two. If it's real, how could it possibly work? But well, if you want to talk that, about problem one, tell me. Tell well, me. you know, let's start with problem one. And, and then I've spent a lot of time thinking about problem two because I think that's what, as a physicist, that's the question okay. you want to ask. All right. But, you know, the, the reason people are fascinated, the reason you're fa fascinated by it and I, and I have been is, we all kind of want there to be more out there than meets the eye. Right. That's sure. the right. that's behind a lot of, of science. In fact, I even wrote a whole book about it. Right. I think we, we wish, you know, we look around the universe and we think, wouldn't it be great? We, we, we can sense emotions. We see our, we have animals and they have empathy. <laughs> and we all wish, because the universe of our experience is kind of, has is pretty bad at times. Yeah, we like live it. and we die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we all want there to be more out there. Right. And so since we can... You know, I can sense if you're happy or sad in a sense. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe just I can read your, your thoughts. And so it's always tempting, temptingly beyond, just beyond the edge of, of measurement. Um, but of course, the one thing I want to say is that there no, it's not controversial at all. There's no scientific evidence for extrasensory perception. And, and I think that doesn't mean, that alone doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means there's no positive evidence for it. But the second question that you asked is, is more interesting. So if ESP were going to be true, what would be required? And that's kind of what, what people don't realize is that, uh, that while we can only, we have five senses that we know of, and we therefore think we're very, there could be lots of things we can't see. We've developed technologies to allow us to see things that are unbelievably small. And uh, so, so let's just take the, the, the the first thing being that many people who argue for ESP don't realize is that everything we know of falls off with distance. If you're thinking and somehow your thoughts are generating something, it should be easier for me to detect them here than on the other right. side of this lagoon. Right. right. Okay. And that's and and there's no evidence of fall off. Right. In, in, in Even the people in ESP tell you there's no fall off. Exactly. And that's right. And that <laughs> and that already makes it suspect. But then the question is, okay, if you're generating some signals. What signals are you generating that I could detect? Well, the first thing you might think of is that, well, the brain is, currents are involved in the brain, electric charges, electromagnetic waves. We're generating electromagnetic signals. Great, except there's nothing more detectable than electromagnetic signals. With the Arecibo radio telescope in, in, in Puerto Rico, we can detect a light bulb on Jupiter, okay? We can detect electromagnetic signals that are incredibly weak. So if your brain were generating something that I should be able to detect, then we could be able to build detect sensors that would detect the, even the smallest possible electromagnetic signals that, that should be coming to me as detectable electromagnetic waves. We don't. Therefore, whatever brain waves you're sending that I should be able to detect are not electromagnetic in origin. I think what you're doing is absolute and, and, and for sure, but it does not eliminate ESP. What it eliminates is, is one methodology, how ESP okay, can be transmitted. And it basically says it does. If it's true, it, it doesn't conform to the physical law that, that we know. Okay, but now, now that may, may not be true at all. But but, but let's go to the but other that's all you're saying. Okay, that's that's what that's saying. But I'm going to convince you. Just just relax. Okay. okay. So now let's say we generate it generates something so minuscule that no detector I could develop could detect it. Well, now there's a problem there, and it, it's a pr central problem of physics. It, you can't have your cake and eat it too. For example, we can detect particles called neutrinos. I've spent a lot of time thinking about neutrinos. These weird particles that are going right through your body as we're speaking here, generated by the sun. They go right through the earth on average without interacting once. They go through but a light year of lead. A light year of lead, in fact. And it, but yet we can detect them. Yeah. We can build detectors that nevertheless have shown that they exist. So that's amazing. That means we can detect things that are so weakly interacting that they could not be possibly the carriers of ESP because if you if your mind generated neutrinos, <laughs> most of them would go right through my head without yeah. ever detecting. And and it's a sense of well, if I if you can generate something that's extremely weak, yes, it could escape all sensors. But if it was extremely weak, then my brain, which is nothing other than a sensor, wouldn't be able to detect it. So you see, the weaker you make it so that it avoids all empirical bounds, the less likely it will be effective as a form of communication. As I say, neutrinos would be the best thing you could think of for weakly emitted signals, 
but then I need a brain the size of a light year to be certain to be able to detect your signals. So the weaker you make it and the more it avoids empirical bounds, the less effective it is as a communication technique. Some would say also that it's independent of time, that you're able to have precognition and know the future in the same way that you can know yeah. distance. Yeah, and, but I've given an argument why that's not the case. And that is that there's so few billionaires on Earth, right? Because if, if I could know the future a day from today, then I would just have to invest a little bit of money to know, in, know stocks that increase by 2%. Okay. And then all within two years, I'd be richer than Bill Gates. I, I totally agree with that. And here's the argument that I've been told by, by some of the leading researchers in the field. Okay. They say, at its best, ESP sl so slightly shifts chance that if you were the best in the world at it and went to Las Vegas, you would still lose all your money. You would just lose it slower. Well, you know, that, that's a nice argument that's given. But in fact, you don't compound interest works really nicely. You give me the smallest, you want, you want to make it 1%, you want to make it 0.1%, you give me the number, and I'll tell you how to invest in the right, stock market, right. and 1.001 and to the nth power becomes a large number really quickly. So I don't buy that argument. It's just That argument is made by people who, over and over again, can't find any measurable phenomena, and therefore argue that it's so small we can't measure it. But to me, that... No, that what they're saying is you can measure it statistically, through meta studies and combining all sorts of but none studies. Of the, but none of the statistical studies have ever passed muster among those people who really like okay. the statistics. I, 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 I've heard it both I, sides. I'd love I, it. I, and I believe you because you're my friend <laughs> okay, no, no, and you're very wish, smart I'd love it and you're a true. good scientist. I know. No, I know. No, the point is we, and that's the other thing we have to remember. It's like the X-Files. You know, we want to believe. We want to believe. And that's the biggest the thing that experimentalists have to remember right. is that any time happens, anytime something happens to us, it seems significant. Right, sure. and we have to allow for the possibility that it's just an accident. Right. I don't sure. know if you to I told you my favorite Richard Feynman story, and I don't know if you, if you want to hear right. it, but in this regard, Richard Feynman used to go up to people and he'd say, you won't believe what happened to me today. You won't believe what happened to me. And people say, what? And he'd say, absolutely nothing. <laughs> because, you know, you have a dream, most of your dreams are nonsense, but once you have a dream that your friend is going to break their arm, and they break their leg, you remember it, you think somehow you had precognition. Right. But you don't know all the things that, that you didn't dream that didn't happen, which are exactly. almost infinite. And, and I think the bottom line is that right now there's no statistical evidence, and if there were, I could use that as an argument to prove that, that you, know, you should be able to, to be able to become infinitely wealthy in a, in, a, in a measurably short time, or be able to do things, and there's been no evidence that, that, that that's been the case. So, from my attitude, there's no evidence for it that's compelling. And every time I think of a physical mechanism for it, it fails. It either should be measurable or it isn't measurable because it won't work. And so, <laughs> given all of that, it's highly unlikely. And I think that's the thing, only thing a physicist can say is that it's highly unlikely. I can't prove, I can't prove, it's a, I can't prove there isn't a teapot on the other side of the moon with tea in it right now because I couldn't measure it. It's just highly unlikely. 